Is this the ultimate street Subaru? I'll let you make your mind up on that. Let me know in the comments below. Let me talk you through what we got. 2001 JDM Bug Eye STI. With all the work being done by Kamikaze Racing up in Sutton Coldfield in the UK. We've got a built engine two litre with a 3071 hybrid turbo. Front mount intercooler. All the bits, not too much bling, but all functional. Turbo should give it around 500-ish. Beautiful car. Inside, typical JDM, apart from this. Samsonus sequential gearbox. Not like the DSGs that you get on the Golfs of the world, where it's paddle shifts. This is a lot more industrial, super heavy duty. Can blast through the gears in the blink of an eye. So just pull back to go to high gear, push forward to go to a shorter gear. When I switch on the ignition, you get the normal Japanese welcome. Basically saying you've forgotten to put your toll card in. But we've got a uh, Cyvex plug and play ECU in here, S7, which I've wired in sensors for engine oil temperature, engine oil pressure, fuel pressure, fuel composition with the flex fuel, air charge temperature, and that might be it actually. We will have, um, on the gearbox, we will have a load cell that will sense when we're about to change gear and will cut the power for a fraction of a second to then make it go into the next dog gear very easily. So the idea today is to map it up and get 500, hopefully 500 plus on V-Power, put some methanol in here, get the flex fuel operational and map it up to as much as it will get on the turbo that's on there, the 3071. Well, actually, it might be a 3076. And um, hopefully see high 500s. So it's strapped on the dyno in the normal way. Two at the front, stopping it moving side to side, and four at the back, two holding it down and two stopping it moving forward too much on the dyno. First job though is to get my deck cans on there. So the same as I do on the road, I do the same on the dyno. So my deck cans, uh, which is what I've made. There's a separate video on that. Uh, I bring it under the, the scuttle tray. Or under the bonnet or the hood, as some people would say. And it's fine to attach it to any of these bolts on the inlet manifold. Um, I'm using this one because the rest of these have been powder coated over or painted over. So I'm going to unbolt this earth strap, which I'll do with the ECUs um, sort of not powered up because it can blow a fuse if you're doing that. Right, so they're attached, bolted on here, up under the bonnet, through the, and you know, for mapping on the road and probably on the dyno today as well, I'll bring this passenger window down and um, get it into the cabin. Right, so I've already wired in the sensors, the oil temperature, the oil pressure, the air charge temperature, the fuel pressure, the fuel composition, um, and a special piece of kit, uh, which is something that Cyvex does awesomely, which is rolling anti-lag, or rolling launch, if you want to call it. It's essentially using the same strategy that um, was used for the Le Mans pit lane limiters. It will hold the car at a certain speed, full throttle, popping and banging, ready to go. So we kind of abuse this facility with, with the Cyvex and use it as, as a rolling launch. So for example, you'd be going along in second gear at 30 miles an hour, pressing the button for the pit lane limiter or the rolling launch, full throttle, popping and banging, 30 miles an hour, let go of the button and you're gone. Okay, so I'll, I'll run it on the dyno now, have the camera at the back, so yeah, we'll see what's going on. So if 
I get it into gear, get it rolling. First gear in a way. At the moment I've just got a couple of bare wires um, while I'm testing this. So if I join those together you'll see that the pit lane limiter is showing as active on the screen there. So I'll just hold those together to make that contact. Eventually we'll have a button on the steering wheel here when it changes the steering wheel. This should hold it at about 4,000. Obviously, I can't condone street racing, um, but if you know the real world example of this is if you're head to head against another car hold it at 30 miles an hour you set your your engine speed or the vehicle speed to that it's holding the, the speed you've got the button pressed let go of it the car just disappears you're already on boost you don't have to wait for it to spool up um, and yeah as far as a head-to-head -head vehicle it's, it's awesome set this up now so that the uh, launch or the rolling launch limit is set at about 40 miles an hour so in second gear that works out about 4,000 so if I press the button to activate rolling launch So enough with playing with the toys, let's mount this thing properly. B power first, see what we get with B power, then I'll put some meth in to about 40% mix and then map it with the methanol. So Cyvex with the fuel tables works in milliseconds of injector opening time. So I've set the table up here. Um, I've obviously done some of the mapping, just not done the final runs. Um, for all the boost levels so um, we'll take it through we've obviously got wideband in here as well uh, which is controlling the fuel in on boost as well as off boost for cruising idle which is a, a really nice feature because then you can have because then you can have safety features to shut it down or, or to put it in limp mode if it starts running lean on boost. Uh, obviously we've got the extra protection of the fuel pressure sensor, so if it senses the fuel pressure is dropping below what we set as predefined limits, then it will also put it into limp mode. So wastegate pressure, we're 321 at the wheels. So putting that into flywheel, 407.9 horsepower at the flywheel. So not bad for a wastegate pressure. We'll take it off from there, see where it gets to. Hopefully that'll make above the 500, should do uh, with this turbo. So, uh, 1.7 1.7 bar, we're making 465 horsepower. Uh, obviously, I've got my deck cans on. Even though I've set up the knock control in the Cyvex, I like to have the deck cans on just as a, a fail safe, just in case um, the, the, the knock control isn't set up properly. It is, it's not making any corrections. It's not hearing any detonation. 
Um, so you know, I can care from my own ears. So we're going to try and push the boost up a little bit more, maybe up to 1.9 bar, maybe even 2 bar, we'll just see whether that gives us um, over 500, which is what we're, what we're looking for. So 1.8 bar gave us 475. Um, just going to try and nudge the boost up a little bit more and also add a little bit more ignition timing, uh, see whether that will get us over the 500. Fingers crossed. Right, let's have a look at the dino grass. Get the fans off, get the noise out of here. Right, so that's where we're at, 1.9 bar of boost, uh, giving us 507 horsepower, flywheel horsepower. So, yeah, get in there. Let's get rid of the old graph. So, all good. I think there might be a little bit more in it. So I'm gonna just try and see whether we can nudge up a little bit more. Okay, boost uh, should be coming up to two bar now. So, fingers crossed, if the turbo is within its efficiency, that should make more power. If it's not, then it won't. Um, so I'll drop the boost back down at that point. But two bar is the target now. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll make more than 507. So we are now 5.17. So just running a smooch over 1.9 bar, 1.95. 5.17 horsepower, lovely. I think it's time to get some methanol in there. So I'll do that now. The way the, the flex fuel sensor works is it measures the percentage of alcohol in the fuel. There's a base level of um, around 5% in UK higher quality fuels um, and it will measure beyond that. Um, in this case we're running at the moment about 39% sort of methanol. Um, so I'm going to set up the methanol blending so blending between the two fuel tables, two ignition tables, two boost targets, two lambda targets, so that at 40% it is all the way on the methanol map. And uh, obviously as it was before on the V-Power, it will be all the way on the V-Power map. So the flex fuel sensor will set it up so that somewhere in between, let's say you were running 20% mix, then it will blend the V-Power mix with the methanol maps and come up with um, exactly where you need to be so you don't need to be super precise about measuring how much methanol is going in the tank so long as it's not above the maximum sort of setup level so in this case around the 40 percent mark so i'm just going to drop it down to wastegate pressure on methanol so that we can build up from there go up through the different boost levels to make sure that the fuel tables and the ignition tables are happy um, so I've just dropped it down on this overall wastegate adjustment target. So for Cal 1, which is what calibration we're in, just dropping it back by one millibar. So instead of two bar of boost, it's going to be aiming for one bar of boost. So I'll give it a run as it is, see where we get.
take it up to one and a half bar of beast. so far so let's give it all the boost um, obviously I've spent a bit of time on these fuel maps beforehand so I know that they're pretty much there already so um, just short cut the process for, for the video today so two bar of boost let's have it or 1.95 bar of boost Have a look at the dyno graphs. 555 so far. I think there's still a bit more in that. So I'm going to try and get a little bit more at the top end there. Um, maybe just bring this peak up a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more torque in the mid range. But yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so we're ready to go. Cooling temperatures, all temperatures, air charge temperatures have been perfect all the way through. Uh, so just a case here of, of seeing whether a couple of more degrees of ignition timing will actually make this more power. So laptop on my on my lap, laptop on my lap. Ready to go. a little bit more because um, we're still not going to the point where it started to detonate yet so I just want to hear the, the faint sounds of detonation in the background um, and then I'll know it's enough so let's let's add a little bit more ignition in there interesting let me show you that one right so remember I said before you can add add time into methanol and it might not make any more power I had another one degree of ignition time in there and it didn't make any difference whatsoever <laughs> So 568.9 is where we're at for the methanol mix. It got to the best timing that it could do. Power would start coming down if I had more ignition time in there. And with that percentage of methanol, it's not likely to detonate. So by, by reducing the ignition timing now, I'm not reducing any power, just creating a bit more of a safety margin in there. So is this the ultimate street Subaru? You tell me.